Hi everyone, I'm Suki Jutla, author of Escape the Cubicle, and today I'm interviewing Joanna Penn for the Alliance of Independent Authors Indie Author Fringe. Welcome, Joanna. Hi, Suki, and hi, everybody watching. So just a little introduction in case you don't know Joanna, but I'm pretty sure a lot of you do know. Joanna is an award-nominated New York Times and USA Today best-selling author of thrillers under J.F. Penn. She also writes inspirational nonfiction for authors and is an award-winning creative entrepreneur and international professional speaker. Her site, thecreativepen.com, is regularly voted one of the top 10 sites for writers and self-publishers. So today we're talking about her book, Business for Authors, How to Be an Author Entrepreneur. So, Joe, a lot of authors um, are quite curious about how to uh, bring an entrepreneurial slant to, to the way they write. So can you get, get us started off by just telling us what does it actually mean to be an author entrepreneur as opposed to just an author in today's world? Yeah, so it's it's one of those questions, and I think many authors feel uncomfortable with the word entrepreneur. So uh, we have to kind of tackle that head on. And basically, if you think about what an entrepreneur does in the world, what people think is that they create value from ideas. They come up with an idea, and then they create a business around an idea, and that creates value for customers um, and also income for the entrepreneur themselves. And if you think about it that way, that an entrepreneur creates value out of nothing, out of ideas from their head then that is exactly what an author does. Like we have an idea and then we create value. We create a book out of nothing. And of course, that's not worth as much as say Facebook uh, in terms of entrepreneurial work or something like Elon Musk is doing. But we can still be entrepreneurs on, on a sort of micro level, a micro entrepreneur. So that's a sort of definition. And then an author always has to be focusing on being an artist, being creative, you know, that part of the brain that isn't concerned with money and really is just creating something new in the world. And we always need to keep that. That's super important. But if you want to be an author entrepreneur, you also have to have the other side um, kind of going. And it's not left, right, left brain, right brain. It's just more an attitude. You have to take the business just as seriously as the art. And The other thing about business, like some people don't like the word business, but the fact is business is incredibly creative. You know, business is what gives people jobs. It's, you know, it's what creates new things in the world, new buildings, new companies. You know, we all know big publishers do, you know, marvelous things. And and so that's the other thing is to consider that business is in itself creative to wear the artist hat and the business hat. And also understanding that being an author is a business like any other. So, uh, you know, we have a product and that product is a book. We have sales and marketing and we have financials and we have customers and we have vendors and all these things that any other business has. And so you have to understand that and learn about that stuff if you want to run a business and if you want to make money, like decent amount of money, and if you want to make a living. So really, the author entrepreneur is taking the business side as, uh, you know, as important as the creative side. That's brilliant. And I think you're spot on, Joe, because with the business, the fundamental about it is about serving. Mm. And as an author, we have to think about who are we serving? And it's essentially our reader. Mm. So my next question, Joe, is um, what key traits does an author entrepreneur need to have? And the reason I ask that is because if you are, if you tell an author that their book is not just a book, but it's a product, sometimes it gets them a little bit nervous. They think, oh, it's my book. How can it be a product? So can you just mm. go a little bit deeper into what are the key traits that an author entrepreneur needs to have? Yes, so I think you're right there. And and that's sort of when you have to separate your creative hat to your business hat, because, you know, many people use that metaphor of the having a book is like having a baby, um, which, you know, I always find really odd, because um, that might that metaphor might work for one or two or three books, but it doesn't work when you get sort of number 25, which is what I'm writing at the moment. And, and it's actually in a business sense, it's kind of more healthy to think of your books as um, employees that go out there and do work for you in the world and bring you money and and business and things. So in terms of the personality traits and the things you have to um, to to be, and what I would also say is everything we're talking about are things you can learn. So I don't have a degree in business. My first degree is in theology and my second is in psychology. Um, you know, I, I, I learned all of this stuff as you have um, over the years. So one of the biggest things for an author entrepreneur is to try new things, to learn new things and change direction when necessary. And this constant learning, 
I think is probably the, the number one thing that an author entrepreneur needs to have or anyone who wants to create anything new in the world because the world is changing super fast and we have to learn new things along the way in order to take advantage of those and pivot our businesses. So for example, um, and, and you don't always have to change direction. So podcasting, I started podcasting in 2009, which is very early and around 2011, 12, I thought this is a waste of time. I've hardly got any anyone listening um, I, I think I'll give it up and then I didn't give it up I decided to double down on it and that was a great decision because my podcast is now the center of my business um, for my non-fiction business so you know but other th times I've changed direction so for example with translations I tried self-publishing with translators and that just didn't work um, because I couldn't market in other languages so that's an occasion where I learned something new I learned about how to do translations how to work with translators and then in the end it just wasn't worth it so I pivoted away from that so that um, the acceptance and learning from failure as well I think is really important uh, you know if you for example changing your book covers is something that is very important for authors to think about over time and, and you can't even imagine that when you publish your first book you think this is the best cover ever and this is the cover that's going to sell millions of books and then about six months later you're like okay what what is wrong and I've done this several times where, uh, the latest time I did this was with Risen Gods um, we had a lovely cover it just wasn't selling so I looked at the category we changed the cover uh, changed some of the blurb and it started selling a lot more books um, and I've changed a lot of covers it's very common to 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 do that because as indie authors we often don't know what the right kind of spin is so um investing in yourself investing in your learning sort of understanding that you have to that that this is a journey and that you can learn along the way and and try things those are all uh really important um attitudes i think and and also another one would be um the long-term view i think that if you look at again using someone like Elon Musk um, you know we will colonize Mars you know we will build things in space this is a very long-term view of a potential business it might even be after he dies now for us it's thinking okay well I, I'm this my first book's coming out like your first book is coming out um, and you think okay I don't need to make my million dollars in week one <laughs> It can take a bit of time. So that long-term view is really important. That's brilliant. Um, and you're right, Joe, because my book's coming out. It's been two years in the making, and it's sort of come to a point where I'm just ready for it to come out to the world, come out into the world. But the funniest thing is, I feel like I've already moved on from it. So that book, <laughs> <laughs> so that book was, you know, it was done at a point in time. But now, you know, as I've evolved and my business is changing and my my direction is changing, so that's mm. going to sort of change or impact my strategy and how I'm going to, you know, uh, build my business based on books now. Mm. Oh, well, then I want to ask you um, with the first book, because, of course, you know, people are listening to me and I've got, you know, 24 books and I've been doing this for 11 years now. You're on your first book, but you are a businesswoman who has, you know, run, who is running a business as well. So what um, what are, are you finding with that first book with the kind of lessons you've learned from your entrepreneurial life? So that's a great question, Joe. So my first book was all focused on how did I make the transition from leaving uh, 10 years of corporate world and uh, moving into creating um, uh, my own businesses and working for myself and basically having a lot more freedom and having the lifestyle I wanted. But I wrote that book two years ago. So now all my businesses have moved on forward two years on. So now I'm looking into, you know, different things like um, rather than showing someone how to escape um, the cubicle, escape the corporate world. Now I'm thinking about how do I educate someone on who's just left that job and now they want to build their own business. So what do you start that business in? What things um, reach out to you? And also you have to basically, as a business, you have to look externally what's happening around you. So right now, We've got the sharing economy. We've got something called the gig economy, such as Airbnb and Uber. So sometimes you have to start thinking, how is my, how can I offer something that's going to complement what's already moving? And, you know, um, as um, uh, Ally is talking about blockchain for books, this is a huge new space now as well. So it's not just about 
creating a book and putting it onto Amazon or other distribution platforms. As authors, we need to start thinking about how is the entire ecosystem going to change? So now we can basically be paid in micropayments and we can even be paid by a, a chapter or, or a page that's being read and you'd actually get real money, like a penny or a cent being uh, given to you for every page. So everything is going to be tracked and monitored. So that just makes you start thinking about how do you start uh, contributing to that ecosystem because what's going to happen, um, what you're building today, it's got to be ready for launch in a year's time. Well, you know, you, you've got to have that foresight. So I think that's mm. why it is really important for authors today, even if they're not thinking about making millions, if you want to make some sort of income, you do have to start thinking about how are you, how are you going to serve these people and how is the, the ecosystem and the market going to to change and how are you going to respond to that? Because that's essentially what a business is all about. And it's interesting because you mentioned the gig economy there and that, that actually leads us on to, you know, thinking about what the author entrepreneur doesn't just make money from books. And I think this is super important because so many people seem to have in their mind that making a living from your writing just involves money from book sales. And that's actually not true. And again, you know, you know this as someone who's got a lot of, you know, different income streams, you don't, that one you're not expecting that one book to bring in lots of enough money that you could just give up everything else and you and you probably wouldn't want to and you know I can tell you realistically with the you know 24 books out there some some months some books bring in five dollars and some months some books bring in two and a half thousand dollars so th the thing is with with the book sales it can be very sporadic so I found with fiction for example it can be very dependent on spike uh, sales like getting a book bub thing Things like that, whereas nonfiction kind of just bump along selling smaller volume but consistent volume over time. And then print books, for example, sell loads in December because, you know, everyone buys books as gifts or, you know, they're like, oh, new year, want to write my novel or whatever. So and then thinking about some of the other things that you can do as an author or entrepreneur. So services, uh, many authors now, many indie authors are offering um, editing, cover design, website stuff, you know, social media marketing help for authors authors, virtual assistant stuff for authors. Um, there's things like sponsorship, you know, people using Patreon, um, like you said, the micro payments, there are people who pay, you know, $2 a month um, voluntarily to listen to my podcast, and they don't need to, it's free, but they do. And I have lots of those little micro payments, then things like freelance writing, speaking, online courses, um, authors have always taught things so you know whether live in universities or at writers festivals and now they're teaching online places like teachable so this is an, another kind of fundamental principle of being an author entrepreneur yes your book is the heart and soul of your business but expect that you will have to have these different things around the outside i guess which will feed in different income streams um so that over time you're not dependent uh, on any one thing and i think that's really important for for independent authors. Yeah, and I think you summed that up perfectly, Joe. because as an author entrepreneur, you're actually very aware of what impacts your business. So like you said, um, uh, in January and December, you get spike sales in your nonfiction and especially probably your career change book because you're aware that there are people in the market out there who are looking for those things at that particular time. Mm -hmm. So using that insight, you could probably do promotions or you could you know, schedule certain things. So I think that's what it also means for, uh, you know, to be an author entrepreneur. You're aware of these um, influences and external things and you're thinking to yourself how can I basically take advantage of that yeah and also drive that in a empowered fashion I think that another attitude of the only artist type author is oh I'll just put my book out there and see what happens um, you know people will find it the quality of the writing will bring people to my book whereas the author entrepreneur says how can I get people to look at my book and it doesn't have to be scammy or sucky you know marketing can be attraction marketing um, you know, there are lots of ways to get eyeballs on your book. Um, and that kind of attitude of I can impact my book sales by actively choosing to do things, that's very important. And, and I think as you know, again, it's not being afraid of failure. So, you know, trying to get a book bub and then not getting one is better than not trying to get one. 
Um, so, you know, and, and, you know, or starting a blog, I've been today, actually, I've been looking at the 404s on my website and, you know, which are failed links if people don't realise that. And my website, The Creative Pen, started in 2008. So what I see over time is, of course, someone who might have come on my podcast in 2010, their website might have disappeared. So I have a broken link and I'm going back and deleting these and going, wow, these people have kind of changed direction, done other things. Um, and that's fine. But it, it's just that that realization that we have to keep updating things, keep learning things, keep changing things, keep trying. Um, and yeah, I think that that's really important. Brilliant, Joe. So, you know, every business basically has to have a strategy and an author entrepreneur is no different. So how can, can you explain how are books the ultimate scalable product? Because for a business to be successful, it does actually have to be scalable and mm. authors are producing books that can be scalable. So can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, sure. And, you know, we mentioned the multiple streams of income and it is important to think about assets versus cash flow. So uh, just on the cash flow, things like um, consulting. So hourly consulting um, is a cash flow thing because you do it once, you do an hour's work, you get paid for that hour or editing, you get paid to edit that book and then that's it. You can never earn that time again. You can never earn that money again. Your time is gone. Whereas a book and scalable income is all about creating it once so let's say you spend a hundred hours on your book I'm um, you know some people it's more some people it's less let's say a hundred hours um, that hundred hours you create an intellectual property asset that you can license and sell for the rest of your life and 70 years after you die which is very very cool now it may be that that hundred hours is a waste because no one ever buys your book <laughs> but it may be that that hundred hours creates an asset that makes you thousands maybe tens of thousands maybe hundreds of thousands of pounds and dollars over time. And that's absolutely fascinating. I mean, the other thing is, you can in that book you can do other things so non-fiction authors particularly can put um, links in their book that go back to their website and they can upsell um, different courses or products so a lot of authors now you know will have a book on a topic and then a course and the book might be ten dollars and the course might be two hundred dollars or three hundred or five hundred dollars so you can earn more scalable income from the book and of course once you've created that book you can put it on all the different platforms you can put it in different formats like um, ebook print audiobook and then as people come into your ecosystem it's like that hundred hours suddenly multiplies into you know again and again as people find your book so this is it's just when the penny drops on scalable income it can change your life so this for me happened you know sort of around yeah 2008 nine ish and I just went Oh my goodness, I've spent all this time, like at that point I had a day, one day job and 100% of my income came from my hourly rate at a day job. So if I didn't go to work, I didn't get paid because I was a freelancer. But if you have a salary, people listening, um, you know, you might skip a few days, but you still have to go to work and it, or you won't get paid. Whereas with books, there's this kind of wonderful moment when you realise that you could step away and the books will keep earning you money, which is just kind of miraculous when you think about it. So thinking about the book as a product for customers, but also as a scalable intellectual property asset is just magical. And then of course you can turn that book into courses, as we said, but also speaking. So you can, um, you know, take that information and turn it into other things. You can license it in so many ways. Um, you know, intellectual property is just fascinating. I'm sure there's going to be more on the fringe about that but um yeah so when you're i challenge everyone listening think about what percentage of your income right now comes from time-based um sources so where you spend your time once and you get paid once and that's it and what percentage comes from scalable income as in that which can go much further than you personally and when I first started to look at that as I said it was a hundred percent non-scalable um, and now around my income is probably around 90 percent scalable so I do very little speaking or you know specific 
you know, time-based stuff anymore. Most of what I do is about creating assets that give me scalable income over time. And I would just add on fiction, uh, many people get more ideas about making money with non-fiction, but fiction is amazing because you never have to update it. So non-fiction books, like you said, um, you feel like your book is out of date because of your life. Um, but with fiction, when you write a story, it never goes out of date. So even if you change or the world changes, people still want stories. So whereas fiction books, you will have to update them at some point. So for example, how to market a book, the third edition, it's the third edition. I've had to write it three times. So it's not entirely scalable. I've had to put more time into it to keep it selling. Whereas my novels, you know, I hit the USA Today list last year with books I wrote in 2011, 2012. So, and that could keep happening. So those are some things to think about in terms of scalable. Yeah, and that's really um, important that you mentioned the differences between fiction and nonfiction because that in itself is almost like a business strategy. Mm -hmm. So as an author entrepreneur, you can actually ask yourself, which path am I going to go down? If I'm going to go down fiction, I know that's going to be way more scalable than writing nonfiction. Or if I do nonfiction, because that's where my strength is, then I need to be aware that I, I need to basically go back and update those on a periodic basis. So it's about making those choices and knowing what the impact's going to be. Yeah, and it's something I really didn't realize at the beginning I did start by writing non-fiction I thought that's all I could do um, and I know that you're you know with your first book on career change as well you're kind of where I was then and you know it's almost like oh I, I don't I won't write fiction it's not something I do and then after after a time I was like oh I'm going to give this a go and then I was like oh I love this but what I think with fiction it's very interesting fiction because a lot of fiction won't make any money at all. Like it really, it will be, it, you, it really might not sell much at all. Whereas nonfiction, if you write a book that answers someone's problem, you are quite likely to sell some books. It's much easier to do SEO, search engine optimization around your book title, for example. So my book, Career Change, people buy it because they search for career change. But it's, it's much harder to sell fiction and market fiction. But so, but I see fiction as more like almost a lottery ticket because because if people do find a novel that they love, they will they will fall in love with it. They'll tell their friends. They'll buy the whole backlist. Um, you you know if you can get uh, you know turn that into movie or TV or gaming rights or the, or merchandise. There are, in fact, that Forbes' richest authors in the world are all fiction authors. So this is the interesting thing. You know, on, on the one hand, you've got the poor author in the garret who often writes fiction <laughs> and, the, and the non-fiction authors have the speaking and the consulting and all that. And then, but the fiction authors can be the ones who change society. I mean, you know, and, and sort of are the ones everyone's talking about, the stories that everyone's talking about. Like Game of Thrones, how big is Game of Thrones in the sort of cultural collective? So these are some things to think about when you're considering what do you want your business to be? And when people say to me, which, what would you give up? Would you give up fiction or nonfiction? And I'm like, well, I'm not giving up either because they play such different parts in my business, but also in my creative life, um, that that's really important. Great. Following on from that question, Joe, what are the different sort of um, different types of author businesses that an author can, can actually um, put into place? Mm. Well, I think, uh, you know, business models is probably probably the way to put it in that um, there are some authors who put out masses of books. So that's one business model. I would call it brute force or, you know, a huge production business model. So those are the authors who might put out a book a month. Uh, they might be shorter books or, you know, they might not actually be. There are a lot of people who write longer books and they're putting out a book a month and they focus their entire time on writing. Um, and this is very encouraging, I think, to people who don't want to do a lot of the other stuff. So for example, you don't need to do uh, YouTube, you don't need to do podcasting, you don't need to do blogging, you don't need to do speaking. You can just sit at your desk and write books that people want. That's a very important part of the business model. Um, and most authors who are doing this kind of um, high volume production are writing genre fiction. So romance, sci-fi, fantasy, you know, thrillers, crime to a point, but mainly those uh, erotica, you know, those bigger genres um, where there are you know, readers who sort of just devour it. So that high volume production is is one option. Um, and then the second main option is sort of what I have, which is 
yes, the books are the center of the business, as we said, but there are other things that bring in income. So I, um, I've just written my second novel this year. Um, so for some people that might be fast, but it's not f in terms of the indie world. Um, so I don't have this fast production style of writing. Uh, so I have to do other things. So I do marketing and other stuff around my books, but I also make money from my website, from the podcast, etc. So those are the two main business models. And then I guess if you're purely nonfiction, uh, many nonfiction authors will just have book as business card, and that will lead into consulting or speaking. Yeah, those are the main things. Um, that a non-fiction author might do. So I think the main thing to uh, to tell people is when you're thinking about wanting to make a living as an author or wanting to be an author entrepreneur, what is the life, what do you want your life to look like? So do you want to spend your time only writing? And um, for me, that's not enough. I like to help people and talk to people. Um, or do you, are you, do you want to be a speaker? Uh, you know, and then find somebody who is already making a living that way and model what they do and, you know, really consider, okay, so how are they making a living? Uh, for example, many sort of best-selling literary authors will make more of their income from teaching. So they might teach at a university um, or do speaking events, that type of thing. So really look at how do people actually make a living? And if you can't work it out, <laughs> then they might have another form of income. So I, I, I know someone, for example, who um, made a lot of money and sold his internet company uh, about six years ago and then he decided to become an author and he's financially independent so you don't even need to consider his business model but um so those are really important things to look at how do other people make their money and how can you model that that's wonderful joe and i think as with every business out there you always have to think about the end game so you know if you're not happy doing public speaking then it's probably best not to focus just on non-fiction and just having the one book so you do have to sort of think about all those different things as well mm -hmm. okay great so my next question joe is how does an author entrepreneur spend their time what are the aspects of running a business that go beyond just the writing yeah so i think this is really important so um you know my time now so what I did have a day job it's really important that everyone knows you know the first four years of my five years in fact of of my author life I had a day job so I would in the morning I would get up and write before work and then in the evening I would work on my author platform my website my podcast blogging that type of thing and I would and then at the weekends you know I would work half on writing half on the other stuff so that and then now I'm full time, but I still try and keep that balance. So I try and do my creation time in the morning. So I always, you know, I'm at the cafe around the corner and I do my writing between sort of 7 and 10 a.m. in the morning um, before I then go and do some exercise. And then I come back and I do business stuff. So that list of business stuff is never ending and if you just tried to stay on top of all the business tasks you know you'd never do any writing so in terms of you know that you have to look at things like because we're publishers there are publishing tasks um around you know when you're ready to do a book you'll be formatting you'll be um actually on the websites uh, the publishing websites then the marketing tasks um so for example uh you know doing podcasts this this a conversation is marketing um you know it sort of brings people into our sphere of influence as such um i will do i i do a lot of these interviews i actually really like podcasting and audio and video as a form of marketing um you know i might be writing blog posts i might be scheduling things on social media and then with the business I'll be looking at um, things like advertising uh, looking at my accounts paying bills uh, working with freelancers so I have a team of freelancers I work with um, so all those different things go into running a business and that's something that many people listening may or may not get excited about um, and I understand that because there's this kind of myth that the author just gets to sit in their room and write and then if you get a publishing deal someone else does all the rest of the stuff um, but I have a lot of author friends who are traditionally published who don't run a business in the same way as I do in that they don't have to 
you know, they don't necessarily do their own marketing on the advertising side or whatever, but they all <laughs> do the things that the publisher wants them to do. So for example, they speak at festivals, they have to do guest blog tours, they have to go and do chats with blog bloggers and they have to do giveaways and they have to, you know, be at events and things. So however you are published, you will have to do a number of these things as part of your author life um, and then even if you have an agent and a publisher you still should be looking at the money side you shouldn't just accept that you know you get five grand in your bank account you need to look at your uh, statements and think about you know how you can might you might sell more um, and as an indie I'm, I look at my bank statement and I go okay so that's good there's some money coming in there or last year I was like why aren't I selling any more of those books on iBooks and then I sort of followed up with them how can I do that so it's staying on top of the business side as well as the creative side and it is difficult and what I would say to people is that's why splitting your time is so important like um, I talked to an author recently who just felt overwhelmed and everything was out of control and I said okay uh, get your phone and get Google Calendar or whatever calendar you use and schedule time for creation so don't just think I'll write when I have a moment what you need to do is actually you know I, I have in my schedule you know between 7 and 9 30 JF pen time you know that's my creation time and then in the afternoon I have this type of thing so that would be my number one tip um, you know for, for time is make sure you separate that creative head and that business head so you can do both that's brilliant, Joe. because there might be some authors out there who think they're not entrepreneurs, but if you've sold a book and you haven't been paid, you would still want to follow up on that. Mm. So even that, even something as small as that shows that you do, you are thinking like an entrepreneur because you've sold something, you've given away something for value and you need to be um, compensated for it. So even the smallest things like just following up with invoices is, is you know, is like a business attitude to have. Yeah. And of course, we all learn this stuff along the way, right? I I mean, you know, I didn't, I wasn't born knowing how to podcast or knowing how to write or knowing how to look at my accounts. Um, we have to learn these things along the way. And that's what's nice about the author journey. And in a way, it's difficult because the first book, you're like, yay, I'm going to make a million dollars. I'm going to, everything's going to be amazing. And then it, it might not be. <laughs> but what's good is the lessons you learn from that first book, you can put into the next book or into the rest of your um, author business. So I would say that that uh, coming back to that attitude of learning and you can learn to be a business person as much as you can learn to be an author. So those are both important. Yeah, I would completely agree, Joe. I mean, when I started running my own businesses, I didn't know how to set up a company. I didn't know how to, you know, look for an accountant. But these things basically come in time. So it's just about, you know, having that attitude of just learning and just giving it a go. Mm. Okay, so uh, my next question, Joe, is most authors might struggle with the concept of um, claiming the word entrepreneur. So what's the simplest step an author can take to start running an author business um, in, in the, you know, like the smallest baby step they can take? Mm, yes, because some of these things sound kind of huge. I think the first thing is to make a decision. So we talked a bit about mindset, but it's really making a decision. I am going to be serious about this as a business. This is not a hobby. So, and the difference, well, one of the differences between a hobby and something you're taking more seriously is separating the financials. So I think the very first step, well, the first step is changing your mindset. It's going, right, I am not going to be the average author who sells less than 500 copies. I am going to do this um, and make a go of it. Uh, and then the second one would actually be setting up a separate bank account. Now, you do not need to incorporate. You do not need to set up a company. You do not need to do any of that. But if you set up a separate bank account, um, just, you know, within your uh, existing bank, it can still just be under your name, but, you know, call it your your business, your author business account or something like that. But, but from the bank's perspective, it's just another account. You know, it doesn't have to be a business account. Um, then you can start 
so then the first thing to do would be to fund it because this is no longer a hobby um, and we call we we generally pour money into our hobbies um, but without expecting any return whereas with the book yes you are going to invest in your business so your initial money uh, you might put in some money for editing or for cover design um, and then you will expect that there will be income from that so you set up your publishing accounts or you tell your if you've got a publishing deal then you tell your agent this is the bank account number for the money that will come back so then the, that separates and you can start seeing okay so I see that I've paid for that or I've paid for that course how am I going to make that money back and then that's the sort of step is to be mindful of where the money is coming in and going out and that's kind of the essence of a business because you know as we both know a business will die if it doesn't have cash flow and you know your profit might be non-existent um, or negative for the first couple of years as you're investing in your business um, and then you will expect money to come back and you know well the money will be coming back but then you'll be spending it and then at some point that money will start being more um, than you expect and at some point it will be more than what you can earn in your day job and for me um, I left my day job in 2011 so I started publishing and writing in 2006 I left my day job in 2011 and in 2015 I started making six figures in pounds and now I make multi six figures in pounds and that after 11 years so let's face it it's not that fast <laughs> but it's you know it's a fantastic life but the very first step was taking that seriously and making making that first ten dollars or making that first one dollar online and then then seeing that in a kind of separate bank account and then you know it's not a hobby it's a fledgling business and everyone knows the, st the statistics you know um, most businesses fail in the first five years but if you can make it past the five-year mark of investing in your author business and learning and growing you may have a very sustainable long-term author business and that's exciting that's brilliant, Joe. And yeah, I mean, just listening to that makes me feel so excited as well, because there's so many opportunities. And it just, you know, the first step you just need to take is that mindset shift. And just saying, I'm not going to be a poor author, I want to sell, you know, X amount of books, and just knowing that I can do it, and I can start with the with taking the smaller step. Yeah, we live. I think we live in the most exciting time uh, to be a writer. Um, there are so many opportunities. You know, you and I both know that the global potential of selling over the internet in a world where you know the internet is reaching more and more people all the time. Um, as you mentioned, micro payments and selling in uh, places that we haven't even considered yet. You know, the digital market is very mature in the UK, US, Canada, Australia, but the rest of the world we've barely even started yet. So I think we we really are as Jeff Bezos from Amazon would say, day one, every day, day one of the new economy. And yeah, I think now is a fantastic time and a much easier time to be an author entrepreneur. So I really encourage people listening, if you want to, you know, take this seriously, make a living with your writing, it really is possible. So um, yeah, give it a go. Thanks so much, Joe, And um, just to thank you so much for your time. And I would highly recommend your book. Uh, Joanna does have a book, Biz, um, Business for Authors. And it, this, is, this is basically my Bible and what I've been following. <laughs> Thanks so much, Joe, for your time. Can you please tell everyone where they can find you and your books? Yeah, sure. So you can find out more at thecreativepen.com and that's pen with a double N. And you can get the your author 2.0 blueprint, which is free. And all my books, Business for Authors, How to Make a Living with Your Writing, all of the books and, uh, and uh, everything um, on Twitter at thecreativepen. That was great. Thanks so much, Joe.